the NFL and fantasy football. It's Friday, 7 o'clock. We get a chance to check in with our guy from CBS Sports, Dave Richard, joining me, Jason Ross. Dave, good morning. What's up, Jay? How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm, I'd be doing better if I didn't run into Javante Williams in one of my fantasy leagues. The dude had one of his best games ever against a really tired Saints defense. And I was getting ready to tell Dave this little fantasy football tip, but instead I'm going to tell you. Okay, Don't good. Don't tell anybody this, okay? We won't tell Dave for sure. No. When a team has, let's call it anywhere between 75 and 100 snaps played <laughs> on defense on a Sunday – and then they've got to go play on a Thursday right after, they're not going to be very good against the run. And that's what happened to the Saints defense. They they played way too many defensive snaps on Sunday against Tampa, and then they were exhausted against the Denver Broncos. And Denver got a fresh right tackle back off of IR and Mike McGlinchey. That just made the matchup all the easier for him. And Javante Williams was off to the races. And Javante Williams has a great matchup next week against the Carolina Panthers. If you've got Javante on your team, enjoy him these next two games and then try and sell high. Yeah, I'm thinking about, speaking of that, like uh, we probably talked to you about this in week three, Dave, when we were thinking, man, look at the Saints, 2-0, and scoring 40 a game. Should we get every single player on that Saints roster? And now they're a completely different team. Well, what happened to them is what's happened to everybody's fantasy teams, injuries. Yeah. They lost two starting linemen. Another one's playing hurt. They lost their quarterback. They lost their top two wide receivers. They are now down two of their top four uh, starting cornerbacks. And when when that's the situation, oh, and one of their starting linebackers has also been out. As long as that continues to happen, yeah, the team is going to have some difficulties moving the ball, stopping other teams. They're going to lose, I don't know, five games in a row. That's what's happened to the Saints. If they were healthy, they probably would have steamrolled Denver, but they weren't, and that's what we got last night. Well, this week gave us some pretty significant football news. It also will be related to fantasy football, so let's start with the Jets acquiring Devontae Adams, uh, kind of the offshoot of this, Dave. The, what does this do for Adams? What does this do for Wilson? What does this do for Rodgers? Kind of let, let's go down that road first with Devontae Adams. Well, the fact that Adams is reunited with Rodgers just cannot be understated enough. It's, it's, it's really a huge deal. Those two should be in rhythm. I would say give them a half of football against the Steelers to get back on the same page. And I expect Devontae Adams to be very close, if not exactly, the receiver that he was three years ago. And when I've watched him play, he still looks sharp. He still looks fast. He doesn't seem like he's slowing down. I know he's 31 or 32 I don't think it matters. I, and I still think he's going to lead the Jets in targets per game. Uh, figure 9, 10 targets per game for Devontae Adams. I think he's going to be a top 12 fantasy receiver. Garrett Wilson's going to obviously see fewer targets, but I don't think it's going to be that much. Remember, Alan Lazard was seeing seven or eight targets per game before this trade. And so that could just kind of be where Garrett Wilson fits in. And I think he'll be more efficient. And he started to finally get on the same page with Rodgers over the last game game and a half so he might be the number two receiver on the Jets but he's still going to be a very good fantasy option there's a lot of teams that we can look at around the NFL you've got the Bucks, the Eagles the Bengals they've got two receivers that you look at and they're basically must starts for fantasy this is going to be another one of those as long as Aaron Rodgers stays under center and Rodgers uh, he hasn't looked exactly like himself but there have been moments and games where it's been vintage Rodgers you could point to that game against the Patriots as an example now he should continue to be on that trajectory, to be like his old self with Devontae Adams back. Defenses are going to change the way they play against the Jets because of Devontae Adams being there. Rodgers is now kind of a borderline number one fantasy quarterback. All three of these guys are going to be players that you're going to consider starting. And the best part about it all, I don't know if this is the best part, Jason, but it's certainly a good part, is that Brees Hall is barely going to see eight in the box. Defenses are going to respect the hell out of the passing game for the Jets now. And Brees Hall should be able to run free. And in the event that defenses start playing heavy zone coverage to try and take away the big play from the receivers, you're going to see a lot of checkdowns for Brees Hall. That's huge in PPR, and it'll get you a lot of receiving numbers as well. The Jets' offense is going to be very good. Yeah, I know a lot of people are anxious about that with Brees Hall, Dave, because that's a lot of people took him early, understandably so, and maybe first, second, third, wherever in the draft, and hasn't netted those results yet. So maybe that'll happen for him. Now, 
on the same day, out of kind of nowhere, seemingly, we had heard the name Amari Cooper. Where could he go? But boom, he goes to the Bills. Not that Josh Allen needs a lot of help fantasy-wise, but what does this mean for the Bills? Kind of that same kind of question for Allen, for Cooper, and the rest of the Bills' offensive players. Uh, it's pretty clear. Uh, Allen needs a number one receiver. They tried to have Dalton Kincaid or Khalil Shakir kind of manage that role. They wanted Keon Coleman to be in that role, but Amari Cooper has been in that role over the course of his career. And we saw it in Cleveland. He was getting around eight, nine targets per game. Uh, but the, the types of catches that he, or the types of throws rather that he was getting from Deshaun Watson just weren't very good. A third of the targets that he saw were off target, meaning that they were uncatchable. And so that's always a problem for somebody when it comes to statistics, which is a big deal for fantasy. I don't have to tell you that Jason, that's kind of obvious, but now he's going to catch passes from Allen. We saw what Stephon Diggs was able to do when he went to Buffalo. And although they're, they are different types of wide receivers, I think that that's the type of effect that Amari Cooper will have. And the more that I think about it, I, I started the, the, after the trade happened, I said, oh, yeah, Amari Cooper will be a number two wide receiver. I'm starting to think he might end up being a high-end number two wide receiver, like a mm. top 15-ish type of fantasy wide receiver. Um, clearly a great opportunity for him. I do think that the learning curve for Cooper is going to be a lot steeper than the learning curve for Devontae Adams. You might not see Cooper go uh, with a big game until week nine, week 10. He's just got to get on the same page and get his timing down with Josh Allen. That's going to take a little while. Question from one of our listeners here, text line, Dave, they want to know, I have to start too. Garrett Wilson, Terry McLaurin, Devontae Adams. I'm sitting Garrett Wilson. I'm okay. jumping in with two feet with Devontae Adams. I know it's the Steelers, but the Steelers have allowed some numbers to receivers lately. And Terry McLaurin is taking on Carolina. I can't get away from that matchup. Yeah. Okay. I uh, want to ask you as well about some other people getting closer. It used to be just a fantasy must start, but he's coming off a significant injury. What What are you looking at with, um, I was going to say Bradley Chubb, Nick Chubb from the uh, no, Browns. Nick Chubb. Yeah. So the Browns desperately need all the help that they can get. And I'm sure that once he's there and rolling, their uh, offensive identity will change and they'll try and lean on him. But every indication out of Cleveland is that they want to ease him back in, not put too much on his plate. They clearly need him for the rest of the way. They've got other running backs that can help shoulder the load. I would guess that maybe 10 touches for Nick Chubb is what we'll get this week, assuming that he's active this week. And I think that there's a pretty good chance of that. And then moving forward, that number grows to 14 and 18. And then when the matchup's right, probably 20, 25 carries, there is going to be a good finish to the Nick Chubb story, mm -hmm. but I don't think it all happens this week against Cincinnati. Um, Pittsburgh, Russell Wilson. Uh, looks like he may be back in the mix. You were kind of warming up, I know, on Justin Fields. If, if you needed someone else on your roster, what do you do with Russell Wilson? So I, I kind of don't get the move. I know that there were plays to be made by Fields, but his metrics mirror those of Russell Wilson last year in Denver. So my, my guess is that Russell Wilson has shown something to the Steelers coaches that make them believe that he's easily the better quarterback and the better thrower than Justin Fields, and that's why he's going to start. And it does change the dynamic of that offense because now all those plays where Justin Fields was going to take off and run – those now become passes, and that could help the volume for everybody involved. But I've seen Russell Wilson look very skittish over the last few seasons, mm -hmm. and it makes me nervous to say that behind that offensive line in Pittsburgh, he's going to be cool in the pocket and make a bunch of deep throws and turn George Pickens back into a fantasy superstar. I think it's going to be a little ugly. I think it will be a lot of short passes and not a very exciting offense. And on top of that, they're taking on the Jets. I still believe the Jets are a very good defense. And I, I, I can't buy into – I'm not really buying into anybody on the Steelers this week, and that includes Pickens. He's a number three receiver, someone that it won't be in my top 24 in the rankings. Najee isn't in the top 24 of my running back rankings. I kind of think this offense could take a little bit of a step backward with Russ. Who's higher in your rankings this week than maybe normal? So if someone hears a name out there, go, oh, I have him. Maybe I should start. If we kind of went down quarterback, receiver, running back, that you know could help some of our fantasy players out there. Sure. Well, I, I'm just, I think that there are a lot of high scoring games on the docket and one of them is going to be Seattle at Arizona. So guys like Darnell Mooney, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Tyler Lockett, that's, that's in addition to the studs like Drake London, DK Metcalf. Do you really need to hear me say their names? You know, to start those guys, 
But those other peripheral receivers and tight ends on those teams are in play because I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. And honestly, I'm just going to go right to the quarterbacks, Jason, because Kirk Cousins is sixth for me. Wow. Sixth. Ahead of Burrow, Baker, ahead of Jalen Hurts, ahead of Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes is buried in my rankings. I don't like him this week at all. Hmm. But I think Cousins is going to be good. I think Geno is going to be good. I think we're going to see another high-scoring game between the Lions and the Vikings. So Donald is top 10. Jared Goff is top 12. I think those two quarterbacks and their peripheral receivers and tight ends can also go and have a big game. And one note that just crossed on my wire is that Aaron Jones is expected to play. That's going to help that Vikings offense as well. And somebody who has been sitting Aaron Jones or was anticipating sitting Aaron Jones, uh uh-uh, you can start him against the Lions. And the Lions, this is the best part about this matchup altogether, Aiden Hutchinson being out. Alliance fans are going to say this is the best part, but (laughs) I say it's the best part for fantasy. Uh, It's going to make it for an easier game for Sam Darnold and for Aaron Jones. So I I absolutely like those guys. I think that's going to be a high-scoring game. And then one more high-scoring game, the Texans and Packers. So Uh Tank Dell is a low-end number two wide receiver, a top 24 receiver this week. Christian Watson, more of a top 30 receiver. Romeo Dobbs, maybe more of a top 40 receiver. But they're all in play along with the studs on those teams because I expect a ton of points scored in that matchup. I want to go back to you You kind of put uh, uh, Mahomes lower on your list. So that's a game of the week out here, certainly and probably across, you know, Super Bowl rematch. If we're talking Chiefs, Niners, who do you like fantasy-wise from that game? Uh, I like Purdy better than Mahomes. I think there's questions about that run game right now for San Francisco. Is Jordan Mason going to play? If so, how effective will he be? Will he favor his shoulder a little bit? Anything that puts the ball in Brock Purdy's hands more, I like for two reasons. Number one, that's where the strength of this 49ers offense is right now. Number two, it's where the best place for them to go with the football is, is through the air against the secondary for Kansas City. I don't want to run into the teeth of that Kansas City defensive front. That's a tough team to run on. So throwing the ball, and that's why Brock Purdy is a borderline start for me as well. I I think it puts the receivers in play. That's assuming that Debo is healthy enough to play. I know his wrist is giving him some issues. But yeah, Brandon Ayuk should have a bounce back game after having a dud last week. Kittle's a stud. I'm curious to see what Ricky Pearsall looks like in the game. And then on the other side, Kansas City is kind of beat up as as far as their skill positions go. We know Kareem Hunt is going to be their starting running back, and you'll start him as a top 24 running back. But Juju Smith-Schuster popped up on the injury report. And if he's out, the Chiefs are back to square one at wide receiver. And Xavier Worthy is kind of a boomer bust play. Kelsey, I'm sure, will get a ton of targets. But I think that there's a chance here that the 49ers find a way to win this matchup against Kansas City. Mm. And that's something that I might not have said a couple of weeks ago based on how the makeup of these teams were at the time. All right, you're based on your answer there. I may know where you're going here, but a question uh, comes in. Brock Purdy or Anthony Richardson this week? I've got Purdy over Richardson, but I've got both of them over Mahomes. Okay. And then I know you touched on this, but just they just came in now. Uh, someone's asking, should they start Nick Chubb? They didn't give me any other options, but it sounds like you're so, saying kind of ease in on him. To give you an idea of where I have him ranked, Jay, I've got him behind Tyler Algier, Austin Eckler. Uh, in PPR, he's behind Zach Moss. Um, I, I just poo-pooed the whole Steelers offense, easily starting Najee Harris ahead of Nick Chubb. Okay. Uh, so Dave, we know you're always busy from your, uh, podcast, everything you're doing there. Where can everybody else get all the information they need to be as prepared as they can for this week? The name of the show is fantasy football today. We'll be live on CBS sports network at 10 AM. If you've got direct TV or any other service, you've got CBS sports network, and we will tell you who we like as starts and sits for the upcoming week. And if you're more of a podcast person, fantasy football today is the name of that podcast. You can go to any podcast platform you like, download it, like, and subscribe to the Fantasy Football Today podcast. All right, you got multiple choices there. Dave, we always appreciate your insight and helping everyone else. Oh, one more just came in. Pollard, Chubb, Aaron Jones, or David Montgomery? I'm assuming they have to start two. Uh, Hopefully you have to start two. I like Montgomery and Pollard. Okay. Okay. Well, perfect. Well, Dave, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We're glad you're able to help those out there as well. And check out Fantasy Football Today, the show, the podcast as well. And uh, we'll talk to you next Friday. You got it, Jason. Have a good weekend. All right. Thank you. You too. That is the great Dave Richard joining us here from CBS Sports. Hopefully that helped you guys out. We appreciate him. Appreciate you guys sending in your questions for Dave when we come back.